Hey guys and welcome back. In the following tutorial I'm going to show you how you can set up your first flow form and how to navigate the back end for that. So the first thing you'll want to do is go into WordPress and once you've installed the plugin you will have this new section flow forms. And over here you'll see there are three sections the all form area so here you can view all the forms you've created. The add new form section, once you click that, of course, it will pop up this new add form option. And all entries, that would be all of the submissions from your various forms around your site that are all stored here for you. So if we go ahead and click add new form, we can then add the form title just up here at the top. So it can be pretty descriptive if you're gonna have multiple forms in the site. So for example, if this is for the contact page, you will likely want to call it contact form. Um, it's going to make more sense, of course. Now, whenever you want to add items to the form, it's pretty simple. So as you can see here, we have a new field section. And in here you have a number of options. There are approximately 11 currently. And you can add single line text, text areas, that's a larger piece of text like a paragraph, emails, numbers, Single checkbox is great for things like GDPR. Checkbox lists, these are great if you want to have options where they can select multiple items. Radio buttons, again, select one option. A drop down menu, again, select one option. Paragraphs and date as well. So the paragraph section is actually used for the text above the form. Uh, so don't get it mixed up with the text area. Uh, it will just let you add a precursor or pretext to any form or in any section between the form uh, if it needs a description. So adding items is very, very simple. So again, if I wanted to create a simple form here uh, with name, uh, email, phone number, and maybe a, let's see, a text area, and then a checkbox, uh, we're gonna use that for GDPR. So first of all, I'm gonna add name. Uh, emails already there. I'm going to make that required. So if you want to set any field as required, you can click here. So as you click into any field, you'll notice that it goes to the field settings tab over here on the left hand side. You have then the number. So again, that can be the number format text area. This can be a message or whatever, of course, you would like. Again, it's a larger piece. You'll also notice that we have a placeholder. And the placeholders basically allow you to enter some text in here initially uh, so that people can see that as an idea as what to write. So in this part, you could say something like um, any more details about your big day. For example, if you're a wedding photographer, that, that would be pretty relevant. The checkbox, again, if you are uh, in Europe and you need GD a GDPR box, this would be a great option for that as well. So um, I agree to uh, my information being used, la la la, whatever the wording should be. So I, I agree to my information uh, being collected. For example, that's not the exact wording. Again, you'll need to check that up, but that would be uh, an option there. And of course, make sure to have that as set as required uh, you'll want to just make sure you turn on required for any of the um, options you need for the form. And you can go ahead and save the form. Once you save the form, you will have a option for a short code. So you can see that here. You can just either hit the copy box or just copy it yourself. Then you can go to any page. So I've set up a test page for my conduct form, added it in there. So paste that code and updated the page. Now again, if you're using our theme, you can of course add the uh, theme to a block and I will show you that in another video uh, briefly. So let me just show you this updated form so you can see how that looks. That would be the form collected or created. So here you can see the name, email, the number, the message. Again, I added the, the text here that I wanted as the placeholder and the option to agree for my information being selected. Then of course, once they submit it, uh, you will receive a message. So let me just fill this out, test, any number, any details here. I'll submit that. And then you'll get a submissive message saying thank you. 
So let's go ahead and look at some of the other options that are available to you uh, so that you can see how the rest of these items over here work. So let's start with a checkbox list. Let's just add that in here. And again, this can be uh, something if you want to add multiple values to. So maybe you want the user to say, you know, what's your, you know, what is your budget? Or it can basically be used for anything where you need multiple selection options uh, from your user. So it could be, you know, what type of photography uh, are you into or are you needing? Or what services do you need, for example? Uh, maybe you do, you know, wedding photography, wedding, maybe you do, uh, you want to do some portraits, uh, maybe you do engagement shoots. That's just an option uh, so that they could select multiple items. Again, you can use it for your own needs uh, when you need a user to select multiple items. You will also have the option for the radio buttons. So this is if you only want the user to select one item. So in this could be, you know, how did you find me? And, and you could put things like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, referral, for example. Uh, this is really useful for photographers. I do recommend actually adding this, uh, understanding how people find you uh, can be really important for your business and for generating more business. You can also include a drop down menu. Again, this could be uh, something similar to above, so I should do the same here again. And of course, this will only let them choose one option. Also, you also have the field here select an option uh, that is the, the uh, non selected value, so that initial value that they see. Uh, select an option is pretty good wording. Uh, so again, I'm just going to add Facebook, Instagram, uh, referral, for example. And again, you can make it required. Just a note uh, on uh, field widths whilst I am here. You can, of course, set the field width 50% and you'll 33% uh, or 25%. Um, as you can see here, uh, if you're using 50%, you can make items as a two column like so. Um, just again, if you want to keep this singular line format, but still have items in two columns, it allows you to create more unique and uh, differing forms for your website as well. So just a little note on the field width, I didn't cover it previously, uh, and just thought I would show you that whilst I'm here. Now we also have the option for the paragraph. Again, this was uh, the item that could be um, just a little piece of text. So again, this could you know, separate the form or give an introduction or some details. So of course you can just add some items there for text and of course the date as well. Uh, so that could be the date of the wedding, the date of the event, the, any date and that's required. And of course that could be, this will be a selector item. So you'll see that whenever we save this, um, that it's a date. So uh, again, use the required values if, if you want those as well and then just hit save form and I'll just quickly show you how these items work. Uh, just to note there is conditional logic available as well uh, but I'm going to cover that in another video so you can see how the conditional value uh, items work and how you can create more dynamic forms uh, with uh, the conditional value fields. So here you'll see we have uh, the name, the email, the number, message, we have the select, selector option with uh, the check boxes. So multiple options can be selected. You have a radio button. So only one of those options can be selected. You have the drop down option. Again, only one option. Uh, the paragraph text, the user can then select the date uh, of the event. And of course the check box to agree to the information being collected. So that's how you build a form and add the different fields to it. Now I'm going to quickly show you how you can use the multi-column option so that you can create two columns for your contact forms as well. So let's head back to the WordPress area and then we're going to look at the form settings area and I'm going to show you how you can create two columns with the form. So adding two columns is actually really easy. All you have to do is again, go to the form settings area, choose two columns, and then just drag and drop any items you would like into the second column over here. 
And then, of course, once it's ready, you can then uh, hit save and it will then update the form. Also, just to note, you can change the button positions and colors. So if you want to have the button left, right, center, update the button text, uh, update the uh, color of that button, uh, you can do so as well to match your branding and it just gives you that little bit more flexibility. So let's just go ahead and save the form. I will show you then the two columns and there you have it. We now have a two column option for the form as well with that updated button. So that's all for this video, folks. In the next video, we will go into more details about the additional form settings area and the flow forms global settings area as well.